Here are four biblical things that make a woman look beautiful to a man. And for those of you who are interested in my relationship training courses, there's only two more days to enroll. So for those of you who enroll before the August 23rd deadline, you get the scholarship, you get all the courses, and you get an additional 90 days of email coaching with me. To learn more about this unique opportunity, you can click the link in the description of this video. Number one, a feminine appearance and attitude paired with a noble character makes a woman very attractive and beautiful to a godly man. Really, when it comes down to finding something beautiful, it really comes down to embracing God's original design. It's very similar to why humans crave things like warmth, food, shelter. You know, why do we want what we want? And it comes back to our design. And in our context, this means that God has made the masculine to find the feminine beautiful. That's just how God made it. So how can a woman appear feminine to a man? There's a lot that could be said here, but here's a, a few important biblical tips. First, it does come down to your external appearance, meaning that you need to be something other than masculine. I'm not giving you fashion advice. I'm not telling you what to wear or how to look. I'm just saying from a man's perspective, a man wants to be with a woman who is something different than a dude. He does not want to be with a woman who is just like a man. So that does need to be reflected in your external appearance. However, it also needs to be paired with the feminine attitude. Again, this doesn't mean that you know, a woman can't be a straight shooter. She can't, you know, just be a little more blunt, maybe, you know, masculine, so to speak, according to worldly standards. I'm not talking about this rigid, you know, legalistic idea of femininity and masculinity. I just know that a man wants to be with a woman whose attitude is different than a guy. It just needs to be different. You don't want to project a masculine energy in your attitude. Now, all of that is really important, but it all goes out the window for a godly man if it's not paired with noble character. It doesn't matter how beautiful and attractive she is physically. It doesn't matter how charming her personality is. If a godly man sees that she lacks godly character, it just doesn't really matter. Proverbs 31, 10 through 11 states, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Number two, discretion makes a woman look beautiful to a godly man. Proverbs 11, 22 states, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. The word discretion means the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing private information. A man is attracted to that type of woman that he can take anywhere. The woman that he can take to the work party, he can take out with his friends, he can take her back home to meet his parents and his siblings and all those types of things. Wherever he takes her, she knows how to handle herself in a respectable, honorable way. So. The flip side of that would be a woman who's very sensitive to things that people say, reacts when, so they, when she hears something she doesn't like, gossips, or just simply can't be trusted to act honorably when something difficult happens in the environment that they're in. Another way to say all this is that she's wise. Knowledge is knowing information. Wisdom is the ability to apply information. Number three, joyfully dressing in a modest way that honors the man who gets the privilege of marrying her. Now, as you've probably heard, men are visually wired. I know that's not a profound statement anymore as it's pretty common knowledge. But what I wanna highlight here is what that really means for a godly man. For a worldly man, that typically means he chases the woman who ever looks like the easiest sexual target. The, mo the more clothing that she's already removed off of her own body, in his mind, that just makes his job that much easier because you know it's basically halfway done for him already based upon her clothing choices. However, for a godly man, this doesn't mean he just turns off his 
visual nature. I'm not saying that a godly man isn't visually wired because he still is. However, he's going to use his visual appetite in a holy way rather than an unholy way like a godless man will. So instead of looking for a woman who looks like she will be the easiest sexual target, a godly man is looking for a woman who dresses like she's looking for a husband and not a one night stand. So it's about dressing the part that you want to play. If you're showing up for a job interview to be the CEO of the company, you don't wanna show up like you're, you're dressed to be the cashier. And likewise, if you're showing up to be the cashier, you don't wanna show up like you just left the gym, you know, all sweaty and disheveled. You wanna dress the part. Now, the same principle goes for being a godly wife. Dress the part, but I'm not married. No man should tell me what to wear. I can wear whatever I want. That's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to wear. I'm just telling you how a guy sees things, how a godly man sees things. If you wanna just ignore that, that's your choice. It's a free country. You know, I don't believe in, you know, restricting your choice to wear what you want. I'm just telling you how that makes a man see you from a godly perspective. This isn't about a legalistic purity culture where, you know, we're shaming women for being beautiful. I'm not saying you should cover your body because you're a sexual temptation to a man. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that your clothing choices should be a reflection of your morality, your Christian character. You wanna dress modestly because our clothing choices say something about the condition of our own hearts. So the other way to say it is you're going to get one or the other person's attention. Your choice, you're, you are either going to dress in a way that does not appeal to a godly man and thus you will be attractive to the ungodly men or you will dress in a modest way and you will no longer be on the radar of the godless men, but you will be on the radar of the godly men. You can't have it both ways. You can't dress in a immodest way and then want a godly man to want you. And this applies to men. I'm just talking to women right now. So I'm directing my talk to women. This does not mean that these standards don't apply to men as well. But again, the point of this video is to let you know what a godly man finds beautiful in a woman. When you treat yourself with the respect your body deserves, a godly man will be incredibly attracted to you. And number four, a woman who has options but is loyal to that one man is very beautiful to that one man. Proverbs 5, 18 through 20, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Why should you be intoxicated, my son, with a forbidden woman and embrace the bosom of an adulteress? The phrase, the wife of your youth, means this woman has been faithful to this man for a long time. A godly man is going to love the woman who's loyal to him. There's nothing more attractive to a man than when a woman could choose other men, but she chooses him instead. A lot more could be said. So if you're someone who really enjoys doing a deep study on biblical principles and then applying them to relationships, again, I would encourage you to check out AGW University. And one of the bonus courses I'm giving away completely for free for those who enroll before the deadline is called The Mind of a Man, how to understand a man and communicate the right message to him. For more information about these biblical relationship training courses, along with all the bonuses I haven't even mentioned yet, the 90 days of email coaching and the scholarship, Feel free to click the link in the description of this video before the deadline passes by. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.